As you can see here, I've already opened up the data set auto.dta provided for us by Stata. And what I'd like to do here is show you how you can display variables and information contained, data contained in variables for a given data set. Now we've already demonstrated before in a previous video how we can go about using the data editor browse button in order to view the contents of a data set. All we need to do is come up to the data editor browse button, left mouse button to open it up, and I'll size it here down to the size of the recording screen that I've got open right now. And right there is the entire data set. We can scroll all the way down through it and scroll across. But you notice how much information we have here to look at. Sometimes we may only want to look at certain variables or certain cases. One way which I always tend to use the list command is if I'm creating a new variable out of existing variables in the data set, then I'd like to display the variables I used as the basis for creating a new variable as well as the result of the new variable to make sure I added in the formula or uh, created the new variable in the way that I intended. So when we do that, um, we, we will want only uh, to display only a portion of the data set. And also, as you saw, uh, this data set has a 70 some observations and uh, a handful of variables. Now that's a lot to look at at one point in time. Imagine a data set that has a thousand or more observations and perhaps 40 or 50 variables. It would be unwieldy then to just actually look at the raw data set using the browse button for the edit command that we've seen for the edit data editor we have. So what I'm going to show you here is how we can use a command in Stata, the list command, to display uh, certain values for a data set. Now first of all I'll just type in the list command and I won't add in any variable designation or variable list here. And you'll see that typically when we issue a command and we don't have variables um, following that command, then you'll see it performs that operation for the entire data set. I'll just hit enter and you notice there's 74 some cases and you notice for each of these cases then what it's doing here is displaying all the data for every single variable. Now that's not very useful for us to to look at, especially if we're trying to create a table. Um, it would take a bit of work to find the values and put them into a nice table format perhaps. But it does report all of the results. Let me now type in a command list and this time let's specify certain variables I want to report information for. I'll type in foreign, make, price, and also MPG. Now you notice what we did just a moment ago, it listed the data in the order which the data has been entered into the data set, so the first through the 74th observation in the data set, and it listed all of the variables for each case in the order that those variables were entered. What I've done here is I'm listing foreign, then make, then price, and MPG. Now if you go up to look at the variables added into the data set, or we go back to the data editor browse button, you'll see then that the variable foreign is actually the very last variable in the data set. What I want to do here is make foreign the very first variable that's reported here. I'll hit return. And again, since I didn't specify which cases, it performs this operation for all 74 cases. But you notice it's only reporting the variables foreign, make, price, MPG, the values for each of these cases. And also it's reporting then uh, these variables in the order that I've added them to the list command. Let me go ahead and reissue the order uh, that we have here. Now let's put MPG first. Let's put then four in between price and make. I already have MPG once. I don't need it twice. And I hit return. And you notice now what it's done here is it's gone back and it's listed the same data again 
but now in the order which I have those variables listed within the um, within the list command. So that's how we can go about then listing our data. But as you've seen right here, whenever I issue a list command, it reports all 74 cases. Again, imagine a much larger data set with many more observations and how much time it would take to scroll through to get to the to the the data and find the cases you're interested in. Let me show you how to identify which cases you want to report. And there's a couple different ways we'll do this, but I'll show you how to do them in order here, the order that they appear perhaps in the data set. So I just went up to the command, uh, previously issued command list, and I select again the list foreign make price and MPG. Now I'm going to type in space in space one slash 10. What this is going to do for me now is report the first 10 cases for these four variables. And there we see the first 10 cases for those four variables. Perhaps I want to report only the first five cases or the first seven cases, maybe the first three or four cases. And so the one indicates the first case number or observation number slash through to the last observation number, in this case observation number three. But that's how we can display information at the top of the data set. You know, the first cases that are entered in currently in the data set. How do we go about reporting or displaying this information for only cases at the end of the data set? Well, in this case, what we'll do is type in minus 10 slash L that's lowercase l, not 1. The mistake that people often make is they see the 1 and the l as, as indistinguishable. And instead of the l here at the end, they type in a 1. It's got to be slash l. That refers to the last observation. So I don't need to know how many observations we have in the data set. I could have put in 64 slash 74, 65 slash 74 report the last 10 cases, but I'd have to know how many cases there are in the whole data set. What is the last observation number? Instead, by having slash L, it means through the last case. Now, what we do is, since we start counting the last case, now let's report the 10 before the last case. So it's minus 10 L, so it counts 10 backwards the last one, next to last, second to last, third to last, all the way through to gets to the tenth to last case. And hit return, and there we see the last ten cases are reported. I can go back and change that and make it the last five, the last three, the last four, but the minus indicates means we count from the last one and count upwards. So it'd be 74th case, the 73rd case, then the 72nd case. And that's how we go about displaying information in Stata for a data set by specifying which variables and also which cases in terms of the beginning or the end of a data set are displayed by using the list. Now, so far, I've showed you how to list information for certain variables in cases at the beginning or the end of a data set. But as it is right now, the data are entered in such that it's ordered alphabetically for the variable make. What we would like to do, perhaps, is display perhaps, let's say, the three least expensive cars or the five least expensive cars in the data set and also the five most expensive cars. So in that case, we don't want to report the information just as it is ordered within the data set right here. Instead, we want to reorder the data based on certain criteria. Perhaps the criterion will be the value of a given variable. And let's so show you how to do that with the sort command. So again, if I just take a look at and I type in list, I'll just type in make price and list all 74 observations that are in the data set, you notice the data are indeed sorted uh, make alphabetically, and that's how the data were entered into the data set. 
you notice then we don't have the information sorted by price. But let's say I want to find the cheapest or the most expensive, least expensive and most expensive cars in this data set. I will type in sort and I will sort by the variable that I want the data ordered by, in this case by price. Now if I hit enter, and now let's go ahead and issue the exact same list command. And you'll notice now the data are no longer ordered alphabetically. Instead, they're ordered based on the price. The f from the lowest price all the way up to the highest price car within this data set. Now let's go ahead and look at physically what happens here in terms of the data set itself by clicking on the data editor browse button. You notice what we have now is the data has been reordered based upon the variable price. And so whenever then we go about sorting the, a data set, it places a particular data set such that the observations are now ordered based upon that one variable. But it still keeps straight the information for each observation. It doesn't mix that up. Let's now illustrate then how we can report information and I'll go back up and use the list make and price in 1 slash 10. These are the 10 least expensive cars in this data set as you see right here. And let's say what I also wanted to do is to know whether or not each of these is a foreign car or it is a domestic car. So in that case, I'll add in the variable foreign. Hit return. And there we see the make, whether it's foreign or domestic, and also the price. Let's say we wanted to look at the most expensive cars in this data set. In this case, minus 10 slash L, L for last, and we'll count 10 from the last one. And there we see are the most expensive cars in this data set. They're Lincolns and Cadillacs. While the least expensive cars, Mercury and Chevys. So that's how we go about then sorting information by a variable and then displaying the lowest or the highest values we see within this data set based upon that sort of variable.